Well, the latitude is complete. They're now, they're now, I mean, look back to the, if you, if you actually read the Bill of Rights and the 14th Amendment, some of the, some of the provisions are precise. They're the ones that are the real embarrassment, right? So you have the Seventh Amendment says that you're entitled to a jury trial in any civil case. <clears throat> I mean, excludes injunction case, but any civil case where the amount in controversy is more than $20. Well, that's ridiculous. That's $20 in 18th century terms. It's, it's, it's an embarrassment, right? It, 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 results, it, it results in entitling people to jury trials in, in tiny, uh, tiny federal cases. So it's ridiculous. But, but it's hard to get around. Then there are provisions which also are embarrassingly precise, but like the Second Amendment. So the Supreme Court has just uh, taken this Second Amendment right to have a, a gun. And uh, there they, so if you, you read the Second Amendment literally, right to bear arms, you know, seems pretty broad. But um, the courts traditionally have kind of ignored that. Now, I don't know what the Supreme Court will do. Um, uh, another example is Well, I, I forgot my other example, but so so precision. In, a, in when you have a constitutional provision that's you know more than two hundred years old, if it's very precisely stated, it's likely to fall. You know, likely to to uh, bear no relation to contemporary need. And that's a problem, and and you don't know what um, what to. Do. I'll give you an exa another example. This is the example. I was like, you know not in the Bill of Rights, but in the, in the body of the Constitution, it, there's, it says that uh, Congress can create and fund and so on um, uh, an army and, uh, and a navy. But there's no reference to an air force, right? So there's no problem in simply having the army and the navy having an aviation arm. That's no problem. I mean, the weapons change. But to create an air force as a separate uh, a branch of the armed services is not actually authorized by con in, in the Constitution. But that was just ignored. They created an air force. No one minds. You know. So some provisions are simply ignored. The other provisions, the ones that are vague, are simply given a, a, modern, a modern meaning. And um, even Justice Scalia uh, accepts that. So the... The Eighth Amendment forbids cruel and unusual punishments. And if you were a real originalist, you would say, well, let's look in the 18th century what was considered cruel and unusual. And one of the things that wasn't considered cruel and certainly was not unusual was uh, public flogging. But Justice Scalia has said he, he believes that no, public flogging would today violate the Eighth Amendment. And... Um, uh, the the Sixth Amendment creates a right to counsel in criminal cases. Well, it's perfectly clear historically. It's also pretty clear from the text that all they meant by that was you could hire a lawyer in a criminal case. Nothing about the state, the government, paying for a lawyer if you couldn't afford one, nothing like that. Or the Fifth Amendment self-incrimination clause. It's quite clear from the text <clears throat> and from the um, from the history, that they couldn't force a person in a trial or some other, you know, proceeding, which he's uh, testifying, to uh, incriminate himself. But that didn't mean they couldn't force him to confess outside the trial and then use that in some fashion in the trial. Um, so almost the entire body of constitutional law was created by the Supreme Court justices by uh, free interpretation or no interpretation of the Constitution, just using the Constitution as a jumping off point. And clearly when you get to the sex cases, you know, like the abortion case, 
nothing. Uh, I mean, you can take the word like liberty and say, oh yeah, liberty, sex, so on. But that doesn't have anything to do with 18th century thinking or with anything in the text except wor words that are so vague they can be applied to any, any, anything that bothers you. You can say it infringes liberty. So, so the, the text doesn't impose a limit. Precedent doesn't impose a limit. I mean, there's obviously something circular. Supreme Court justices make up some principle. Like they say, for example, that you need a warrant to search a person's home. Actually, read the Fourth Amendment. There's nothing about requiring a warrant. The Fourth Amendment limits warrants because the framers of the Constitution were concerned about warrants. If a search was conducted pursuant to a warrant, it gave the searching officer an immunity from his suit. So they didn't like warrants. But the Supreme Court turned that on its head, said you need a warrant. So the fact that they've but they said that, you can say, well, that's a precedent. Now, if judges follow that, they're just applying the law. They're not making anything up. But they're applying something which was itself made up by judges. And the Supreme Court is not bound by its precedents. It's overrule them. Or it can say, it can, you know, distinguish them to death. It can distort what they say. So they have a complete free game, except for public opinion, which might precipitate a constitutional amendment. So there's some things they can't do. But, um, but, but that's the only real limit. Now, at our level, we have a freedom in areas where the Supreme Court hasn't spoken. But um, we, we do obviously have to follow the Supreme Court. Otherwise, they'll reverse us and humiliate us. So we have to follow the Supreme Court. So we're more, we're more like real judges because we have more constraints on us than they do.